Hello everyone. The topic of today's video is antibiotic. We're going to have a general introduction on antibiotic and their different classifications. To begin with, we have to differentiate between two main terms here. Antibiotic and antibacterial. Antibiotic are microbial metabolites that work against processes unique to pathogenic cells. So they are unique to bacteria only. And they result in either slowing the growth of the bacteria or by killing the cell. On the other hand, antibacterial is more broader term. It includes the antibiotic themselves plus other synthetic substances, including heat or some chemicals. For example, chlorine that works against bacteria. To have ideal antibacterial, it must exhibit some properties. For example, it needs to be selective, not only against specific type of bacteria, for example, a gram positive or gram negative, but it needs to be essentially selective for bacteria itself. So it must not cause a harm to our own cells, which lead us to point number two. So it must have low or no toxicity to help to host cells. Also, it must be effective with high therapeutic index and it should not be res resistant. Resistance is a problem we face with antibiotic and it's a problem we need to overcome. Some bacteria and different strains of bacteria are more developed and they have the ability to produce some toxins that enable the bacteria to survive in conditions where antibiotics are present. Also, we need our antibacterial agent to have good atomy, so good absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. And this is important to allow for oral delivery, which is the most convenient uh, way of administering drug, and also to assure that the drug reaches the site of action. Finally, it must be bactericidal in a state of bacteriostatic. We want to know what's the difference between bacteriostatic and bactericidal. Bacteriostatic are antibacterial agents which inhibit the cell growth only. They don't kill the bacteria in a state. They prevent the cell growing and multiplying, which gives the body's own defense system enough time to gather their resources, uh, for example, your immune cells, antibodies, and so on, to destroy the bacteria and wipe it out from the body. Examples on bacteriostatic is sulfonamide. While bactericidal are agents that successfully kill the bacteria cells. So they are more as a killing agent. We need to know which drugs are bacteriostatic and which are bactericidal because this helps us in choosing the right medication. This is very important uh, when we're talking about immunocompromised patient. Bacteriostatic is not the best choice here because these drugs, as we said, rely on a healthy immune system to complete the job they have started. So people with weakened immune system can't really achieve a full treatment, and thus they're not the best choice here. And instead, we can give a bactericidal to this patient. Now let's move on to antibacterial classifications. We have different classes here. First, the inhibitors of bacterial cell wall synthesis. So these agents target this unique structure that surrounds the bacteria cell, which is the cell wall. The cell wall 
have different functions, including it defines the shape and gives rigidity to the cell, um, bacteria cell. But also it controls the water passage. Without a cell wall, water will continuously enter into the cell as a result of osmotic pressure because inside the bacteria cell, there is lots of solute where outside there is little of solute. And we know water loves solute. So it will move from outside into inside. And that leads to cell swelling and lysis. So this is how these drugs work. They inhibit the formation of this cell wall and thus water will enter a lot, causing the cell to burst. Animal cells such as human, we don't have a cell wall and that makes it perfect target for these antibacterial agents. Examples of this class include penicillin, cephalosporins and vancomycin. Second class is the inhibitors of a nucleic acid synthesis. This includes sulfonamides, quinolones and trimethoprim. They targeted the nucleic acid of the bacterial cell. Third, we have the inhibitors of protein synthesis. Agents like these, they target the process of making essential proteins and enzymes required for cells survival. So without these proteins, the bacteria cell won't be able to survive and will be destroyed. Also, some books and references include fourth category, which is inhibitors of a plasma membrane. They uh, interact with the plasma membrane of the bacteria cells and that affects the membrane permeability. In further videos, we're going to discuss the chemistry and the mechanism of action of some of these classes. This is the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching.